somebody put in the chat or in the comments, she says, I think my kids have one of these. Do I dare? <laughs> She's going to go get her kids plush and sell it. Hey, Bolo Buddies. Thanks for watching. All right, you guys, in this video, we are going to talk about big money bolos, items to be on the lookout for, items you can hopefully buy low and sell for a profit. I am going to tell you where they got it, what they paid for it, and what it sold for. I posted this, share your best October bolo in my Bolo Buddies Facebook group and invited all of you to share your big money bolos. So let's get started. I think some of these are going to be like, what? You sold what for how much? All right. I got this at a church sale this summer in overflow of clothing box still in the donation trash box. It's vintage 1980s tracksuit size 3X. It was so outrageous. And given the size, I knew someone would want it and possible use, use it for a costume. I bought it for a dollar. It sold in about two months for a best offer of $50. Yes, absolutely. I would have picked that up also. And I don't even like to sell clothes anymore, but that tracksuit is rad. We'll call it rad. Vintage Art Deco bench legs. I got these on the side of the road off a trashed bench. So zero dollars. They sold for a hundred dollars and had them listed for a few months. This is what they look like. They are cast iron bench legs, Queen Anne style. Now talk about sourcing from the trash, the side of the road. That is fantastic. This one comes from Bolo Buddies member Childhood Finds, which means she has joined memberships on my channel at level two or higher. And she gets a pop-up of her YouTube channel here and a link down in the description. So please go down to that description and check out those channels. They have educational content for resellers. And then there's also eBay stores are listed. So if they do not have a YouTube channel, you can find their eBay store links down there. Another great way to learn. And you never know, you might find something you want to pick up as a Christmas gift, right? She said, I bought this in an online auction a lot. Uh, <laughs> you guys, I'm actually reading what they write. So sometimes my words get a little jumbled. I apologize. Let's try this again. I bought this in an online auction lot along with other antique Wedgwood pieces. I have about $10 into the piece and took a best offer of 212 within one week of listing. It's an antique dark cobalt blue Jasper Ware Wedgwood biscuit jar. It's a biscuit jar and that's what it looks like. Hi, I bought this young Simba by Douglas Toys at a yard sale for $3. He was near perfect, but had some rubbing on his eyes. So whenever you see plush, uh, collectors will sometimes ask you about the plastic eyes. They will get scuff marks or rub marks. Um, I'm going to call them scuffy wuffies. <laughs> That's what I always say over on whatnot. When I'm looking at jewelry, I'm like, it's got some scuffy wuffies. That's like my new word. Um, if you're not following me on whatnot, definitely check it out down below. There's a link. You can get $15 to shop. If you use my referral link, I would love for you guys to come hang out and see me over there. I am doing, I was doing three shows a week. I have bumped it up and I'm doing daytime and nighttime shows now. So I'm on sometimes six times a week and it's super fun. Even if you don't buy, just come hang out in the chat and have a good time. It's live. You can talk with other people and you might find something you like, right? It's auction style. I start everything usually at $5 or less. So you can find some things to purchase for yourself or quite possibly even resell. Um, but anyway, plush, this Simba plush, big money bolo right here. She said, thankfully, a Sharpie took care of it. So she took a Sharpie and fixed the eyes. Oh, now there's a tip. Has anybody else ever tried that? Huh? I wouldn't even have thought to do that. But I do always take close ups of the eyes and include those in my photos if there is an issue. Another thing I say to do is bubble wrap around the head if you're gonna ship it in a poly mailer. I use bubble poly mailers typically, depending on the size of the plush. If it's a smaller plush, it's going in a bubble mailer. But I will wrap the eyes and tape it around so that it covers the eyes to keep it from getting more damaged or damaged during shipment. 
So yeah, a Sharpie pen. She said, I sold them to someone in the Netherlands for a best offer of $325. On top of U.S. shipping, they also had to pay VAT. The buyer was all in for $452.26. There it is. Simba. Posable plush. Wow, that's fantastic. $3 into $325. Somebody put in the chat or in the comments, she says, I think my kids have one of these. Do I dare? <laughs> She's going to go get her kids plush and sell it. Um, yeah, you might want to do that. <laughs> That's a lot of money. All right, here we go. Found this plush for $2 at the local thrift store. Couldn't find a ton of information on com or comps on this specific draft, but other Manhattan toy companies tiptoes plush animals showed sold comps between 60 and 120. I set the price at 85 to test the waters and it sold for full price plus shipping in 48 hours. Could have probably gotten more, but this item had flaws, including writing on the tag. Very happy with the quick flip. And this is what it looks like. Yes. So I always say, if you cannot find the exact item, run an auction, try an auction first. Bought this for 50 cents and took a best offer of 78. It is a vintage Captain Crunch. It's a Captain Crunch. Um, Jean Lafont Lafonte Vinyl Coin Bank. <laughs> Captain Crunch. Wow. Paid $19.99. Sold in less than 24 hours for $250. It is an iBot Roomba J7 self-emptying robot vacuum. Self-emptying? Where, like, where does it empty? How does it self-empty? I've got to know, you guys. If you have one of these, let me know what self-emptying means down in the comments. All right, the next one. Pick this Coca-Cola hat up for a dollar and sold it for $53.99. It is a vintage Coca-Cola red hat, summer hat cap, snapback red, the game big logo from the 90s. And this is what it looks like. This would have been another one that me personally, if I could not find any others like it, I would have did an auction and started it high. Some of those vintage snapback hats can be crazy money. Bought this Bradford Exchange 2017 Peanuts Christmas Cuckoo Clock for $51 on an online auction. Took a best offer after a few days on eBay for $495 plus shipping. I think I could have got full asking price closer to Christmas, but a bird in the hand thing. Uh, Charlie Brown Christmas Peanuts Cuckoo Clock Lights Bradford Exchange Works, and this is what it looks like. My mom bought this at Value Village Savers in the States. For two dollars, sold it for two hundred and forty-three. All in two eighty-three, in less than a day. Craziest sale I've made so far. Vintage Fantastic Faces mask from the nineties glows in the dark. Oh my goodness! Okay, so we all know that those vintage scream masks, Fun World Division, Easter Unlimited, Scream, Ghost Face masks go for big bucks. Yeah, we know about those. This one. I didn't know about this one. Now, it has the same type of hood that ties and it glows, but this one is a Fantastic Faces Vampire and it glows also. Wow. Have you guys ever seen this one? Let me know down in the comments. My neighbor bought a box of vintage stuff over, so I ended up paying about $3. I'm sorry, brought, not bought. Three bucks for it. Sold it in three days for $79, but took a best offer of $75. So it looks like they had it listed for $79 and took a best offer of $75. So they offered $4 less. I don't think I would like miss out on getting the item I wanted for $4. <laughs> That's crazy. It's a vintage 1981 My Pretty Pony Hasbro Blonde Romper. Never seen that one. And she said, I paid pennies for these at a yard sale. They are littlest pet shop, mixed lot of 11 dogs, puppies, Hasbro, some second generation. Read description. Sold those for 42. Paid about $5 at a yard sale. Took a best offer of 68 international sale. Sweet April 
Remco Rocking Horse Crib High Chair Doll Clothing Vintage. This is what it looks like. I don't think I'm familiar with that one either. But, you know, having the clothing, the accessories, uh, the doll, all of that is going to increase the value of your item. Sealed Sony Micro Cassette Player, thrift store, $9.99. Sold within a few hours for $259.99 plus shipping. It's a micro cassette voice recorder and it is still in the original packaging. First time posting a bolo. I bought this Bones coffee mug at a local thrift store for a dollar. It sat in my money pile for a long time, probably a year. Took an offer of 55 plus shipping within a week of listing. Thanks for your videos. Yes, some coffee mugs can be a bolo. I think I talked about this one in my coffee mugs bolo category video. So if you're not watching my category videos, definitely check those out. That's where I pick a category and I break it down and tell you the things that sell for the highest amount of money in those categories. And I do have one on coffee mugs. It is an older video. Bolo Buddies member Piece of Scrap. This is her YouTube channel and she sells a lot of clothing and she does really well with it. Uh, paid $3.75 at the Goodwill. Sold on Poshmark for full asking price of $45 plus shipping. And it is a sweatshirt. And this is what it looks like. Found this at the Goodwill for $3.99 while visiting her son at college. Sold it for $75.26 plus shipping. And it took about two months to sell. It is a Bungo Stray Dogs Big Plush Doll toy. I don't know how to say that. A type of... Taito prize. I don't know what all that means, but that is definitely a bolo to be on the lookout for. <laughs> it kind of has like an anime look to it. So I'd probably look that up if I saw it. Unsure if I shared this on August bolo. Here is an authentic Louis Vuitton cross body purse. Found at a church sale at 11 a.m. It was my last stop of the day. This and a Prada were sitting on a table. I thought it was too good to be true. I bought them for a dollar each. Did my research. I was 99% sure they were real after research. Cleaned them up. This Louis Vuitton sold for $850 and went through Posh's authenticity screening and passed. Prada sold for $200 and I thrifted it on, par on Posh and eBay. So this is what it looks like. And, um, you know, what do you guys think about that? I also... It probably got passed on because people like me walked up and said, that's probably fake. It's only a dollar, you know? I don't know. I feel like I pass on a lot of purses because I'm unsure if they're fake or real and I won't sell fakes. Don't sell fakes. Don't do it. Not a good choice. Um, you will get in trouble. All right. Bought this prosthesis. Prosthesis. Am I saying that right? Ah, Bought this prosthesis leg at a rural Wisconsin. <laughs> I can't talk today. Bought this prosthesis leg at a rural Wisconsin rummage sale for $10. Took a best offer of $200. Buyer paid shipping. Uh, true life below the knee prosthetic leg with left foot split toe size 26. These are a big money bolo. I'm surprised it only went for $200. Some of these go for crazy money. Yes, definitely look them up if you see them. I paid $40 for a pair and sold for $400. They are Ethan Allen British Classics Palm Grove Chairs. And this is what they look like. Yeah, Ethan Allen is a fantastic brand to, fic fic to pick up if you are willing to ship big items. Me personally... I don't want anything to do with furniture or really big items. I don't want to ship them. I don't want to mess with it. Um, there are people that sell these things all the time and they make crazy good money. Uh, they use a shipping service. I think a lot of people, I think it's called you ship and they will come and get your item and ship it for you. And I think you like bid, they bid on it for you. And then you pick, you know, who you want to come get your item based on the price. So it's kind of a cool thing, but not me, not no interest here for me on shipping big stuff. But again, people do amazing with it. Bought for approximately $1.50 a piece, 
So $37.50 sold for $90 despite their tags having marker on them. They're really cute. This sale was just for fun. Halloween tie teeny babies. A lot of 25 with tags. Some internet exclusive rares. So if you asked me would I ever pay $1.50 for a beanie baby, my answer would be absolutely no way. <laughs> and I'm talking about the Thai teeny bean, the teeny beanies, the beanie babies, uh, just the standard ones. Now, there are certain Thai beanie babies, not, some of them go for decent money, but most of them, the beanie babies don't go for much. There are some exceptions. I don't know what they are, but some of you watching will. Um, airs on the tags, different things like that. They're not going for thousands of dollars typically. You might get 50 bucks or 100, yeah, sometimes, but you have to know what you're looking for. Most are not worth much at all. Um, you're lucky if you can sell them. Now, some of the bigger, like I've talked about these in some of my past videos, I'm trying to remember what they're called, like Tylux or something like that. There's certain Beanie Babies that are bigger. The bigger vintage ones, I've gotten 50 bucks for some of those. So not all of them are bad, but this person said, you know what, Halloween's coming, I'm gonna try this, $1.50 a piece. Ah, 37, a good profit. Would I have done it? Probably not, but um, they did it and they sold it and they were successful and they said this was just for fun. So they probably were in the same mindset, I'm gonna try it and see if I can do it. And the tags having marker on them, decreases the value. So I think they did really good at $90 for all of these. So just a little learning lesson there. If you sell Thai Beanie Babies, let me know down in the comments, what is your best Thai Beanie Baby flip? All right, you guys, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Check out that description for the people that I mentioned in this video and also some of my other referrals. I talked about whatnot list perfectly. Um, I also have worth point down there, uh, different things I use for my business. All right, you guys, thanks for watching.